In this final video for lecture 15, as we've been discussing, like in the previous lecture as well, about vertical and horizontal asymptotes of functions. In particular, we're interested in the in behavior of various functions. There's one other family of functions that we run across in calculus that I do want to talk about that has a horizontal asymptote. And that's going to be the arctangent function. You know, we've kind of ignored the inverse trigonometric functions a lot in our lecture series, but arctangent's a pretty good function in its own right. It doesn't have the restricted domains like arc sine and arc cosine have. And it does have this asymptotic behavior that you see the graph of arctangent given right here. As x goes towards infinity, we're going to see that tangent inverse of x will approach pi halves. And as x goes towards negative infinity, we're going to see that arctangent will approach negative pi halves. And this comes from the fact that arctangent is the inverse function to tangent. Since tangent has vertical asymptotes at pi halves and negative pi halves, as x ranges from negative pi halves to pi halves, we see that the inverse function, which will switch the roles of the x and y coordinates, we see that those vertical asymptotes turn into horizontal asymptotes, and then the range will range from negative pi halves to pi halves. And so for the tangent function, its range was all real numbers. Arctangent, its domain is now all real numbers. The roles of x and y get swapped around. And so those will come up as we compute limits as x approaches infinity right here. So consider the limit as x approaches infinity of sine of arctangent of x? Well, because sine is a continuous function, you can bring it out of the calculation here because uh, continuous functions can be brought out of limits. So we're going to get sine of the limit of arctangent, arctangent here of x as x approaches infinity, like so. And so as x approaches infinity here, arctangent is going to approach pi halves. It'll approach pi, ha pi halves from below. So this will become here sine of pi halves. Specifically, we're approaching it from the left side. What that really means is we're computing the limit as x approaches pi halves from the left of sine of x. That's really what we're doing. That's, you know, the more precise thing here. But this, because of the continuity of sine, we just have to compute sine of pi halves, which we know sine pi halves, that's 90 degrees, sine is going to equal 1 in that situation. So knowing the horizontal asymptote of arctangent is going to be very, very useful. Now, I do want to approach this question in a slightly different perspective, because uh, whenever you deal with inverse trigonometric functions, you can associate those as an angle, right? So we say th theta is equal to arctangent of x, which actually tells us that tangent of theta is equal to x, or in other words, x over 1, for which Associated to this angle, we can connect a right triangle. A right triangle whose angle in question is exactly this angle theta right here, for which if the tangent ratio opposite over adjacent is x over 1, we can fill those in as x over 1. Uh, the opposite side's x, the adjacent side is 1. And then by the Pythagorean equation, the other side, the hypotenuse, will be the square root of 1 plus x squared. Using this, notice what we're trying to compute here. We're trying to consider what is sine of theta. If arctangent of x is theta, then we should have to compute what sine of theta is. So sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, becomes x over the square root of 1 plus x squared. We could, we could substitute sine of tangent inverse of x with the function x divided by the square root of 1 plus x squared. Now this function right here resembles... Uh, types of infinite limits we were considering previously. Notice if we take the limit as x approaches infinity here of x over the square root of 1 plus x squared. Well, if we look at just the dominant terms, the dominant term on top is x, the only term. The term on the bottom that's dominant will be the square root of x squared right here as x approaches infinity, for which the square root of x squared is actually the same thing as the absolute value of x, x divided by the absolute value of x. But as we're approaching positive infinity, um, approaching positive infinity implies that x will eventually be positive, and as such, the absolute value is no different than x itself. And so this will simplify just to be the one that we saw previously. So this gives us a second way of computing that same problem um, if we wanted to compute it using sort of like this algebraic approach as opposed to the trigonometric approach we started with. Either approach is perfectly fine. I thought the yellow one was fairly straightforward, so that's the one I would recommend if we needed to. 
Let's consider the limit as x approaches negative infinity of arctangent of e to negative x. Kind of like we saw with the previous example, since arctangent is actually a continuous function, we can bring it out of the limit calculation. So we're going to get tangent inverse of the limit of e to the negative x as x approaches negative infinity right here. In which case then, we essentially we have to compute tangent inverse of e to the negative negative infinity. This is really going to be e to the infinity. That's going to be uh, that's going to be arctangent of infinity. What does that mean? Now, when people some people don't like this arithmetic with infinity here. It's like, oh, because it's dangerous. It's dark magic. Ooh, you're going to you know curse us all. Well, when we say things like arctangent of infinity, this is really just an abbreviation for limit notation. We're saying at, take the limit as x approaches infinity of arctangent. Of x. That's really what we're asking. And so our tangent of infinity is asking what's the horizontal asymptote of our tangent on the right? What is the in behavior on the right hand side? And as we observe on the previous slide, that's going to be pi halves. So we see that the limit as x approaches negative infinity of arc tangent of e to the negative x is going to be pi halves. One last example. Let's consider the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of arc tangent of 1 over x minus 2. Much like we did on the previous one, I'm going to pull the continuous function out of the limit. So we're going to look at arc tangent of the limit of 1 over x minus 2 as x approaches 2 from the left. For which case we can plug in that 2 from the left. We're going to take arc tangent. We're going to get 1 over 2 from the left minus 2. So as we're considering, we're approaching 2, but taking numbers that are less than 2. So if we take a number less than 2 and subtract from a 2, we're going to get a number that's really close, but less than 0. So we end up with 1 over 0 minus. As we've seen previously, 1 over 0 minus, as we if we take negative numbers that get really, really small in terms of absolute value, that's going to explode towards negative infinity. So we're getting our tangent of negative infinity right here. And like I said previously on the, on the last example, if you really get like your, I don't know, your, your, your buns in a twist or something, I don't know, when it comes to doing arithmetic with infinity or negative infinity, remember that these symbols of using infinity is always shorthand for a limit. We're taking the limit as x approaches negative infinity of arctangent of x. That's all we're trying to do here. So don't, don't worry about it. It's just an abbreviation of such a thing. For which case, the the horizontal asymptote on the left of arctangent is going to be negative pi over 2.